Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago right here on Tobago Updates. Now, this morning, we continue our conversation by talking about how Tobago moves forward after that budget allocation. Now, this morning, to have that conversation with me, I have former Assemblyman, Mr. Max James. Good morning and welcome. Good morning to you, and thanks for having me as usual. So, uh, uh, before we start off, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in a minute. How are you doing? Well, I'm, do I'm doing my best. I'm trying to focus on other aspects of my life, not only the political aspect. Well, good, so, good to know. But yes. um, have you been able to pay some attention to the budget? I paid little attention to it this year. All right. And the fact being is that it is the same old, same old situation year after year. And quite frankly, um, we have to look for solutions um, to what is happening here in Tobago and to find pathways, new pathways to solve the yearly um, debacle, the yearly underfunding, um, to redefine how Tobago should pursue its self-determination vis-a-vis -vis that of the entire nation, Trinidad and Tobago. So in my mind, that's where the discussion should be centered at this stage and not necessarily what we got this year. Um, because what we got this year and what, what we're likely to get this year and what we got last year, um, it hasn't moved Tobago forward, regardless of whether the TPP is in governance or in government or PNM or whoever, until we find an effective solution to Tobago's self-determination. Um, we'll come back here and argue over um, the budgetary allocations. So simply put, it has not worked. Um, and therefore, the time has come where serious decisions must be taken. Because the PNM could win the next elections or they could lose it here in Tobago. We don't know. The UNC could win the next elections uh, or the PNM could win it. But there will always be some kind of um, polemic, some kind of confusion. And we want to find, as I said, some kind of new pathway to resolving this issue. Right. And what does that new pathway look like for you? Because even in conversations with the chief technical advisor at the Division of Finance, Mr. Anselm Richards, a new pathway for him looks like revisiting that DRC ruling. You know, a new pathway for him, you know, speaks to the fact that the initial ruling is outdated today when we look at the population size for Tobago. Um, so for you, what does a new pathway forward look like? Well, I was a secretary in the Tobago House Assembly when that measure um, was put into the legislation at number 40. And then it was just triggered when we got on the funding in the time of Bas Pandey and Kamala Prasad Dissess and all of them, the UNC. And it was useful then as a start and as some kind of measure to help us here in Tobago in terms of our um, development aspect or, or development side um, in Tobago. But it was dead in the waters as swiftly as it, as it came. Right. It was dead in the waters. And um, we only played along with it for all these years. None of the governments, because we were all, only in power for four years, um, the, PNM, the, 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 the successive PNM administrations did nothing about it. Um, you would time and time again hear uh, one of the former chief secretaries, um, that is um, over London, say, he's comfortable. Or oh, I'm not uncomfortable. And that did nothing to assuage the, the, the real concerns, the serious concerns and the, and the underpinnings of our, of, our, uh, of our expectations and our society here in Tobago. It did nothing. And um, we are still at that stage where um, people will say, what you know, hearing that's a new talk, you spent all the money on, 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 on Trinidad contractors, the economy isn't moving, uh, we need to do more. And, and um, you squandered the money, and you always have that battle. So you underfund it, and then the talk is, how do you spend the money? It is not for, it's not for anybody 
in Trinidad to determine how we spend the money. Mm -hmm. We don't dictate for the, the, what we loosely call the central government how they spend the money in Trinidad. We don't, we, we don't dictate to them, but they want to dictate for us here in Tobago how the money should be spent. And unless the law had something otherwise, you, you, you find that the problem here is that you have to, on a yearly basis, submit those estimates. But that's a redundant process because even if you submit those estimates, there's, there's, there's a significant proviso or, or a shackle that keeps us at 4.0% and 6.9%. So it's really a useless exercise because regardless of whatever estimates you send, the best minds that might go and the best thinking that might go into the budgetary arrangements, you're still shackled to 4.03, 6.9. Not taken into consider. In, 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 even if the law says, look at the growth centers in Trinidad, Look at the fact that Tobago is separated by sea. Look at all those kinds of things. Look at how we're supposed to grow and develop in Tobago, vis-a-vis -vis Trinidad. It's a waste of time. It has not worked. I would not necessarily agree with the technical advisor to the chief secretary when he says um, we need to revisit that, that particular um, clause in the act. The whole act needs to be revamped. Um, because what will you come up with? I haven't seen any convincing argument from that particular individual or anybody in the assembly for that matter to justify what the people really should need. So we need to come up with a formula, not just to revisit the dispute resolution commission clause. What we really need is to, to come up with ideas, a particular formula that says this is what it should be and we are certain this would some people say 10 percent of the budget and i ask how did you arrive at 10 percent some people say 30 percent and i ask how did you arrive at 30 percent you can't just pluck figures out of the air his uh, justification was based on tobago's um population growth rate since then to now i i that's uh that's not a good argument for me. It cannot be. Because it's, well, if, the if, if, question if, if the, is, if the current just, justification yeah. is that every citizen should be getting a dollar, but in how, the current al allocation, yeah, he's how, indicating that it, it is not so. But how do you arrive at, at that notion that every Tobago union should get a dollar or $5 or $10? What determines that? That's the issue. You see... The Prime Minister at this stage um, looking to buy part of, I think it's the Manity Field, uh, some gas field somewhere between Trinidad, the mainland Trinidad, and Venezuela. Yet we have gas fields northwest of, north and northwest of Tobago, which he's not discussing at all. We should be in a position, just as Trinidad is in a position, to take all the wealth of the nation and give us 4 zero three percent the wealth of tobago should be ours to exploit that's where the discussion should be what is tobago likely to make what is tobago likely to make had our hydrocarbons our gas and oil north and northwest of tobago be exploited that's where we need to we need to quantify those things not even the quantification we just we just need to say this is yours because we have it Taxes are paid for Tobago and Trinidad, robbing us of our, of our revenue intake. So the entire legislation needs to be worked. You have the question of, of seven nautical miles, whether it should be 12 nautical miles. Why don't we have the median coordinates between Tobago and Trinidad? And then they say, well, it's one country, but it has not worked for us. So the fact that it has not worked for us, then we need to reconfigure. You had in, in, in the Tobago bill that is likely to be placed in the parliament in this, in this um, particular term, where it says that the central government could appropriate for itself any land in Tobago for use of the, of the, of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. So whilst you're talking self-determination, there are, there are significant 
um, provisos or significant clauses in the Tobago Bill that still that still shackles us, or still shackle us. You see, and therefore, the conversation again for Tobagonians should be whether West Tobago. These things are not working for us. Then there's the whole question of town and country planning. The governmental structure that is proposed in the bill is not working for us. How 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 persons are, are are selected by the president and we are president which we we don't vote for, which we have no way of selecting or electing, as the case may be, in the um, electoral college. So it's a very dim future. I see it doesn't give us hope. This year again, um, the Tobago's developmental. Um, um, aspirations have been damned. Because right, and, the, and moving forward, what steps do you think should be taken in this fiscal year to ensure that some of the development projects are undertaken despite the $205 million development budget? We have to remember that the developmental budget and the sums given to it for Tobago this year, a lot of it has to be used for the payment of old bills. Those are facts. We wouldn't debate that. There are old bills that came across from um, the time of Ansel Dennis and even perhaps further back. And therefore, what do you do? Those are commitments. So by the time the money arrives, there's a significant connection, um, sorry, a significant commitment that erodes your decision making, erodes what you have, and hence your developmental trust. So you, by the time the money comes, there's nothing in the kitty to do any serious work. And there's where we are. And I think that Tobago needs to wake up, whether you're PNM or whether you're TPP or PDP or whatever we have, political configuration we have here in Tobago. We, we need to wake up and... and uh, so what can they do to get the projects off the ground in the meantime? Well, what just the same way they have been doing, um, um, talk to contractors who have the money and they pay in pieces as they go along, they pay in pieces as they go along. And even that, when you do that, you're being criticized um, to see that you're giving Trinidad contractors mm -hmm. the lion's share of what is available. But people seem to forget that there was, in fact, an investigation into what took place during the time of um, Ansel Dennis. So you couldn't give the Tobago con contractors when there was an ongoing and active investigation. Still has not been com completed. I, I perhaps might chide the Chief Secretary for not telling us more on that. Um, he needs to tell us whether those investigations are completed, what is the status of them, and how he intends to um, uh, prosecute that issue going forward, because he'll be faced with a barrage of criticisms, and you're not giving to be good contractors any work. But that is not altogether true, because from my understanding, some of them have been getting um, some form of contracts here or there. But as again, as I said, there isn't enough to go wrong. From the time the money comes, it's almost done. Understood. But we're going to take a quick break right here and we're going to come back and continue this conversation. So see you soon, guys. Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Good Morning to Bigu right here on To Bigu Updates. Now we have been chatting with former Assemblyman Max James and we're talking about the Tobago budgetary allocation for the fiscal year 2024-2025. And so, welcome back, Mr. James. And Thank you very much. So, there has been conversations in the space regarding mismanagement of funds. There's the argument that it's not about the allocation, but about your ability to manage said allocation. Do you think that this administration is doing a good job at managing the allocation that they have? Well, there'll always be differences of opinion as to where money should be spent, how it should be spent, how fast it should be spent. And every administration will be subject to that criticism. 
some may argue is a fair criticism, some may say it's an unfair criticism. Um, I tend to be somewhere in the middle um, because everybody will have the, what you call the value opinion. And um, at the end of the day, what we will perhaps judge the performance of any particular administration is whether they held true to their, their mandate or the manifesto, as the case may be, whether there were any barriers to, uh, to preventing them from accomplishing what they said they will do or what they have set out to do. Uh, what were the priorities? Did you gain your priorities from the people who voted you or from Tobago as a whole? Those two things to me would be the template um, by which any administration should be judged. Um, we could look around Tobago and see areas of significant improvement. Um, I have my own criticisms and um, I'm hoping privately that those things can be um, addressed in, the la in this last um, fiscal year and, and an election year, uh, so to speak. But I think that they have done reasonably well considering the constraints and barriers that they would have had. Uh, so that in a nutshell, you have to look at what people said that they will do. They will have to justify what they have not done to the population and say, we couldn't do this because of this or that. So I think there's yet some time to go in which judgment can be passed. Do you think that the Tobago Carnival is a good investment that this administration has made, specifically when we have a situation where a budget for the 2024 October Carnival has not been forthcoming? Carnival really is not my thing. I, 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 tend, to, I, I tend to be very moralistic, so to speak. I really don't like to see women parading themselves in feathers and you've seen almost where the areas where joy comes to a man. And um, that really is not a good thing. Um, I don't even grow up my, my daughters to, to do that kind of thing, to be, to be almost naked in the street. Um, but that's my own view. Don't lash me or don't punk me for saying that, but that's my view. Um, but if you don't do the carnival, you, you, they will say that you're not supporting the culture. I don't know if this kind of carnival, this kind of carnival is truly a reflection of our culture. Understand my words. And, and therefore, um, it's one of the areas that I, I may, I perhaps will, um, people might criticize me for saying I don't support carnival in the present form, mark my words, in the form it has taken. If you don't do the carnival, whatever the mitigating circumstances, people will say, we're not going to vote for you. Can, um, the Panmen can't make money. The Calypsoans can't make money. I have no problem with that side of it. I love Calypso. I like Pan. I'm a musician. There's the other side I have a problem with in the form that it is um, uh, shaped uh, in respect of um, those kinds of celebrations in Tobago. But that is a decision that they will have to take and they have to deal with. Um, but I say yes to Carnival, but not in the form um, it has taken over the, over the years. But in terms of the allocation towards Carnival, do you think that it is a viable way for this administration to distribute the limited resources that we have? Well, I don't know. Um, again, my, my answer will be, will be biased against it. I will, if I had my way, I would spend, if that's me personally, I would spend it on uh, more development aspects where Tobago needs that right. kind of input. But the Tobago Carnival is expected to draw in a number of um, tourists and also, as you indicated, help to bring some vibrance and some life to the orange economy with the photographers, videographers, the Calypsonians, the dancers, the... Um, promoters and all of the, all the, these persons within that industry. So what would you have done differently to engage that audience while being able to attract, you know, international tourists to come to well, the island? I think it's only marketing. Marketing of what we have and what we're likely to have so that you'll have the, the 
the influx of people and, and hence uh, influx of um, um, critical revenue that is needed for the Tobago economy. Uh, but in terms of the specific the questions before um, on the whole cannabis issue, uh, for me, as I said, and I don't want to beat it too much, is that um, I don't like the spectacle where women are basically um, without clothes on the streets. I, I think there could be a different form where you can still have the influx. And that is an imported kind of a culture from Brazil and Trinidad and so forth. I don't think we need to follow that particular element of Carnival. You could still get the successes without that um, exposure of women's bodies over three or four days, as the case may be. But again, in terms of the budgetary allocations, yes, certainly, because it will bring in the kind of revenues that are sorely needed. But the, the planners need to sit down and to really market to be in a particular kind of way. Um, I don't know if they have done um, a sufficiency of that. They need to look at it. But marketing will always help. Do you think that the formation of a number of these companies under the division assist with um, spreading the allocation effectively? We are still developing. Uh, we are still developing. I think that the development aspect of Tobago is still being tested. The jury is still out on it. Um, so you have TPAC, you have the Tobago Festival Commission. Um, those are companies set up to, to promote culture and the arts and all of those kinds of things. And perhaps uh, those two are necessary because I, I don't know, especially TPAC, I, I, I haven't seen or we are not yet experiencing its full impact on the Tobago economy and for people's um, development as a whole. Um, so I would say yes to TP, to TPAC. I would say, well, the Tobago Festival Commission has been, I think, as long as we had the Tobago House of Assembly. But of course, as any developing nation or, or, or region, um, you have to try things. And I won't, I won't lash it, um, as some people might be wont to, to, to lash it. And I think that is important to have um, um, commissions and, and, and these satellite and bodies to assist to Tobago's developments. Yeah, but, but not only um, in the area of culture, the arts and, you know, performance and stuff like that, but we see a number of these companies coming up under the different divisions, like, you know, under food security, under the division of settlements and all these other divisions creating these companies. Do you think that this is an alternative means of, you know, trickling funding from external bodies into the divisions or do you think that is an effective means of helping to allocate those scarce resources we are still too young as a region of the of the entire nation and um so let us see um my own problem my only problem with those new companies and bodies um uh, is that the job security that it offers to workers is something I have a concern with, um, particular TADCO and the likes. Um, even in TPAC, I've had to go there as a consultant, as a trade unionist, to defend workers. The whole question of um, employee rights need to be addressed. I don't think that the policy from the Executive Council down to those boards have been properly um, enunciated. I don't think the governance is clear. You have um, boards and chairpersons doing what they feel they should do and uh, even supported by certain secretaries in the assembly. So the whole question of human resource management um, is, is sorely lacking and you cannot and must not have boards and chairman of boards doing what they think they should do. So is it that so the, um, there is so the, no job the, security the, within the companies? Well, you, you're talking about um, um, and Tatco, for instance, where almost to a man, the whole company or everybody was uh, was basically fired based on the description of the law. And then you bring in fresh people. So you lose your systemic knowledge. And then somehow to me, it's a means of, of, um, of controlling what people do. 
the, I was talking to a director on a particular board the other day. It's on the same board of TATCO. I said it's a human resource management issue. And, and um, he would have said, you see this thing about human resource management? Um, you know, um, that's a whole concept. I said, really? How, how come human resource management is an old concept? And um, it's a dubious concept. I said, everything in life has to be managed. You have to manage yourself. It's personal management, personal development, and all of that. You put that collective as a whole on the particular unit, um, and then you have what you're supposed to have, esprit de corps. And, and therefore, if you can't manage that, then we're in problem. So human resource management is something that people keep um, um, saying offensive things um, about. And I think we need to, to pay particular attention to the um, development, developmental aspect of all our human resources, the succession planning, because you have people leaving organizations, you lose systemic knowledge, and therefore the organizations that are here or there are poorer because you have not engaged in effective succession planning. I think there is, there is where we are. We, we concentrate on engineering and medicine and all the rest of them. But the key component, the key modules, the, the key approaches to ensuring that you get what you're supposed to get for what you've been established to do is human resource management. And um, or human resource management scientists are paid scant courtesy. They, 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 are, they are not taken seriously. And there's where we fall down in our public service um, um, delivery. Um, in the Tobago House of Assembly. All right, and so one of the questions that I have in regards to the contractual um, arrangement for persons who work for these companies, is it that they don't have the same three-year um, contract as workers under the Assembly? Right, and so, yes, they don't have that. That's a stipulation that was supposed to be honored. But again, you have whoever is the secretary for public administration, if it's the chief secretary, he needs to be very clear and to hand on the policy as enunciated. And from since the time of Ansel Dennis, I think it was him that would have established the three-year um, contract regime for persons in the Tobago House Assembly and certainly satellite bodies. And, and you, this administration has not done so. And that's a criticism, it's a fair criticism of this particular administration. Workers need to be given um, certainty and, and follow-up certainty and renewal of contracts. So you hear this argument that your contract came to an end due to the effluxion of time. And the law says, no, you could only not renew someone's contract based on very narrow and very Im but, but important pathways. The person would have had not performed properly all right, or if you are um, dismantling the, the entire uh, unit or in the entire organization, but that must come from an executive council. Those are um, socio political decisions, socio economic decisions, but it must be done at the executive council level. So when you hear this nonsensical talk in the society, even from secretaries, that well, the contract came to an end because they might have had a bad deal under the PNM. You came and you met the people there. You have to find ways and means of, of dealing with what you have. The question of your policy, however, management and execution is a different issue. So you don't want to have people underneath you who are at a very senior level. You need to control what they do. So I could understand it at that level. But in a regular um, run of the mail employee, um, you don't need to be employing those people. One, I was a labor secretary. And I debarred myself from hiring people at the lower levels, from range 46 downward, AO2. You have the administrator to hire those things based on very strict conditions and a very strict budget. And you can monitor what they do, shortlist what they do. That's how it's done large, by and large in Trinidad, um, the other part of our country. So, but at the policy level, I can see the secretaries getting involved. And that is what I had put and was approved by the assembly. Um, it is the same PNM, however, under Overland that dismantled that, and it has followed suit throughout all these years. And I would tell people, if I have to choose between any party and the worker, I'll choose the worker. 
because people depend on good administration, good HR management to deal with their, their livelihood. It, it is not sufficient to say a contract has come to an end. The law says that if the worker has performed creditably, you must renew the contract. So I want to tell workers outside there, the law supports you. If you have performed properly and creditably, your contract must or ought to be renewed. Um, and what is, the, what is the measurement tool to determine if someone has performed creditably? It is the human resource management aspect. It is the performance appraisal. It is the performance management. It is sorely lacking in the Tobago House Assembly from the time we left power to now. Politicians want to control who is employed and who is not employed. And that is wrong. It is patently wrong. And, uh, and uh, you're not going to get the kind of productivity and, and loyalty and harmony in the workplace when somebody is unsure whether the contract is going to be, is going to be renewed. It's a very serious matter. The chief secretary campaigned on that. Right. On that an employee should not have to fight for something that he or she is entitled to. And I think it's something that needs to be fixed um, very, very, very quickly. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. James. Now, unfortunately, we come to the end of this morning's discussions. We want to thank you so much for giving us your time here and, you know, bringing a different perspective to the budget conversation again. Thank you, guys. We want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for your likes, your shares, and your comments, and all that you have been doing to make Tobago updates the number one broadcaster here on the island of Tobago. Remember, you have a civic duty to help us grow and regain our following, just as we had before. As you know, we now have a new Facebook page. So remember to like, 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 and share, share, share with your network. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Thanks for favor to wake up and hear my neighbor. Sixty thousand people strong.